welcome to Learn Kubernetes with Google. My name is Aldo, and I'm a software developer in GKE. I'm also an active contributor to the Kubernetes scheduler and the job controller. In this two-part series, I'm going to show you how you can use the Kubernetes job API for parallel processing. I assume you're familiar with the Kubernetes API and have used kubectl or the REST API to create objects in a Kubernetes cluster before. In any case, I'm leaving some links in the description where you can get more details. So what is a Kubernetes job? A job defines tasks that run to completion and then stop. This differs from other workload APIs, such as deployments and stateful sets, where tasks or pods are kept up and running indefinitely. Then why not just use plain pods? Because pods are ephemeral, if they fail, the Kubernetes control plane won't restart them. On the other hand, if you use the job API, the job controller, which is part of the Kubernetes control plane, retries the execution of failed pods by creating replacement pods until a specified number of them successfully complete. Here is how the simplest job definition look like, looks like. This job defines a task to be run in a single pod. You can see that it's pretty similar to the definition of a standard pod. You can execute this job using kubectl like so, and if you inspect the job resource, you will see that the job controller created a single pod and tracked its completion. Now, how do we make a parallel job? That is, how do we create a job that executes more than one task? Well, you can simply set the field parallelism in the job spec. In this example, the job controller will create three equivalent pods that will all run to completion before the job is declared as completed, as you can see when you inspect this job. However, when doing parallel jobs, we don't usually want all tasks to run exactly the same operation. We probably want to assign each task different chunks of a set of work items, where these are different frames of a movie to be rendered, or different sets of log lines to be processed, etc. One way of achieving this is to do parallel processing using an external work queue. In a nutshell, you can set up a queue behind a service and have the pods in the job repeatedly obtain work items from the queue until it is empty, like in this, in this picture. For the queue, you can use popular applications such as RabbitMQ or Redis. The important requirement is that the pods should be able to determine if the queue is empty so that they can exit. In this example, we're going to assume you have a running pod running Redis and a service fronting it. If you're not sure how to set this up, I've also left a link to a tutorial in the description. Let's, let's identify the pod and service back in the Redis application using kubectl. And then we can obtain a shell to this pod using kubectl to manually insert some elements into a queue that we are calling myQueue. We are using fruit names to represent work items. In a real world scenario, the work items might be populated by another job or application. Then you can write a program that obtains work items from the queue and processes them. Here, we have a sample Python program that obtains values from a Redis queue until it is exhausted. You can see that we configure the host name to be the name of the, of the Redis service we saw before, and the queue name to be my queue. The task in this sample is just to print to the console. After we have built a container image that contains this program, we can define a job that uses it. We can set the parallelism to the number of workers we desire. We use two in this example. After running the job with kubectl, you can have a look at logs for one of the pods, and we can see that this particular worker processed three items of the queue that initially contain five elements. Well, that's all I have for today. In the next session, I will show you how you can use index jobs to do a static workload assignment. Until then, 